welcome back all you beautiful people and first things first thank you so much for your continued support i truly appreciate it and if you're new to my channel i appreciate you too just go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me so you don't miss out on my content if you don't already know you see that 173rd flag back there that's right best unit of the military and that means that i am doing another episode of com chatter the solid steel and sex appeal podcast we're on our fourth episode. I've had two members of leadership to include my platoon sergeant and my first sergeant from the 173rd Fusion Company, a fellow soldier, Ian Jones. And today I've got another soldier with me, just so happens to be the platoon sergeant's gunner while we were deployed. Without further ado, let's see who it is. Before we get started, however, I do want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell notification so you can be notified whenever I drop new content. Make sure you like the video and just keep coming back for more. Uh, all right. Well, so for those of y'all that don't know, this handsome ass man here is uh, Emmanuel uh, Bonilla. Uh, Bobo. Bobo. Yeah, as most people knew me. Uh, when I joined the 173rd, I was a good old E2 private. Just made E2, actually, when I, uh, when I got the E1. So it came straight out of basic, uh, AIT, and then uh, Fort, Fort uh, not Fort. I like you want to say Fort. Camp Adderley. Uh, Italy was my first duty station. Uh, 173rd was my first unit, uh, FSC. Uh, good old Sergeant Sturdy was my team leader. Uh, actually, not at the time. Um, God, I forgot his name. Uh, the cat that was my original team leader was an old E4 uh, infantry. You know, when we first got there, they still had all the infantry dudes there. Yep. And um, that was a wake up call. It was when the uh, military was still kind of going from uh, E4s were like your team leaders and stuff, and then the E5s were. Uh, this, uh, the, the squad leaders and stuff, but um, so we had the E4 dude, the infantry dude that was in charge of us, um, and then it was um, I can't remember if it was Sergeant Sturdy, then Sergeant Chapman, or if Sergeant Chapman came on later, or, or how that went, um, but eventually Sergeant Sturdy ended up being the team leader, and Sergeant Chapman was a squad leader, um, and uh, yeah, so so you, so you came straight out of. AIT like me well I mean I went to airborne or whatever but you went straight from AIT to Italy yeah yeah so I didn't uh, I didn't get airborne in mind when I initially joined up for the military I was um, I was looking at the x-ray delta program but I, I couldn't get I came under a waiver and shit so uh, for me it was um, straight from basic to AIT to Italy I think uh, and what's cool about that was that um, the majority of people I was in AIT with uh, half of us well so I'd say it was a good third breakdown. Um, a third of us went to uh, Fusion Company. Uh, a third of us went to Echo Company over in, uh, not Echo, um, Easy Company. Is it Was it easy for the other one for the first 503rd? I believe uh, so. And then um, and um, some people went up to BSB. Uh, so we kind of got, got spread out, but a lot of us end up going to 173rd between Italy, Germany, um, and then there was a few other people that went to like Alaska and Hawaii and, and stuff like that. But so um, a few people I knew from um, from AIT end up coming with us. At least I feel like it. I don't know. I know Perez was there. Yeah, yeah I know. I know a lot of you guys knew each other, mm -hmm. and a lot of the BSB guys because like I hung out with Jones a lot, and a lot of his friends from AIT and whatnot were in BSB. So a lot of you guys came oh. together. Yeah, yeah. I don't, um, I don't know if I was with Jones in, in AIT. Um, honestly, that one, that one's even. I only remember Perez because uh, AIT is where my <laughs> my first daughter, mom, was from. So <laughs> we, uh, I know a few people from there, but I don't you know. Gotcha. Yeah. So, what did you think when you first got to Italy, being a a green private, and were you? Were you enjoying it like when you first got there or were you scared or what were your feelings? Um, it was, it was a mix. So when I first got to unit, it was, uh, it was, a sh uh, I got there after president for, uh, cause I think I took like a break or something or I don't know, for whatever reason, I didn't go with, with everybody else from my AIT. Like I ended up going delayed. Uh, so when I got there, I actually landed like bumfuck middle of the night. Uh, the Me too. Was shut down. <laughs> um, and then I didn't know the fucking infantry had their own codex for the military and shit. So, you know, they teach us, you know, Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta, Echo, 
Um, you know, and so when I get over there, I'm like, yeah, I'm over in Foxtrot Company. And they're like, Foxtrot Company? What the fuck is Foxtrot Company? <laughs> Foxtrot Company. Like, that's what they told me. Fox... So the um, the night guard was an E4 dude, like, called up this, you know, it was a big shit show. They were trying to figure out where I'm going because they didn't have us set up yet. You know, the first time Whitney was talking about, like, they just took that area over. But they didn't have anywhere for us to stay at all. Um, and so... Uh, they end up calling down this sergeant. It was like fucking 10 or 11 o'clock at night or something. And he was 20,000 degrees fucking hot when he found out. Uh, Lord forbid, I had fucked up. And I said, I apologize for all the cussing. Uh, I messed up and said, you know, Foxtrot rather than Fusion. Because I'd never heard of Fusion. <laughs> yeah. <until, laughs> I got there. And so he proceeded to tell the, the specialist to smoke me for about a good. Uh, oh, man. Smoke, smoke me until I could learn uh, the alphabet or something like that. I don't know. It was like. That was ridiculous. Was something, something dumb. So the dude, uh, the, the specialist smoked me for all about a good 20, 30 minutes. You know, had me do some suicides in the hall, some trumpet jacks, all this stuff. And I'm, I'm still, I'm a private. I'm like, what the hell? What did I do? Like, I, right? I still have no clue <laughs> what it is that I did or what was wrong or anything. Thankfully, the specials was pretty cool about it. Like, he basically just kind of smoked me until the sergeant left. Uh, and then after the sergeant left, he said, man, get up, man. Like, uh, don't even worry about it. Like, he's, <laughs> he's a, like, everybody already knows he's a dick. Like, nobody likes him and stuff. He's just one of those. Uh, but he was like, you didn't do anything. Like, no, if you're new here, you don't know the system. You kind of got to, you know, get in. And so you're looking for fusion. And then they put me in. And I was in, um, I was in the room with... Um, Oh, first time Witten talks about his nicknames, everybody. Um, the 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 giant dude that was um, uh, God. He he was he was part of our unit. He was uh, I think he ended up being a gunner or something for a little while. Um, Peyton? No, not Peyton. He's a big dude. Yeah, it was Peyton. Peyton. It was Peyton. <laughs> Peyton, Peyton. Peyton and Green were the two big ones that we had. Yeah, so Peyton. I ended up being in a room with Peyton and. Uh, one of the small dudes from maintenance. Um, I was in a room with him and then one other. There was actually four of us in the room. We had a bunk bed. And the, the room was only designed for, you know, one or, one or two people at most. Yeah. Uh, and so there was four of us in there. And so we ended up staying in there for a little while. But then um, was it one of the sergeants or um, Sergeant Lowe, somebody came down and they saw we were living in and they were like, no, this, this isn't going to work. Like and so they got us about it there. They made a they made a big 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 deal big fuss about it and stuff. And so we got moved over to some other barracks and but yeah, I got there, man. It was it was cool. It was I mean I, I was excited because it was Italy, but then I got to the unit and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but I, yeah, I love it, man. It was um, the, uh, the base that you can see from end to end, stand at one end, and you can see the end of the base at the other. And, uh, the the hoo and everything else. So, hoo-rah, hoo-rah. <laughs> did you did you get there to go to both Honesfeld and Grafenbeer, or were you okay? So you went to both of them. Yeah, yeah, I got um, Graf Honesfeld, and then I want to say another Graf. Yeah, um, there was there was two Grafs and one Honesfeld. Okay. Yeah, I, I and then we deployed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was training, training, deploy. Um, and I, cause I remember that because the last one, um, Holtz or uh, Lotz was pretty, uh, him and Chapman, as far as I remember, were pretty adamant about, you know, making sure that we get out there and, you know, experience some of the town and stuff and get, make sure we had our weekends off. And, you know, if we didn't need to be at the motor pool, we didn't need to be at the motor pool. Um, and I, so I remember them making a big fuss about that and him coming down and yelling about that um, quite a bit. So. But it was good. Um, I remember they, they, they did a good bit of because the first one uh, was still, like I said, a little bit of old school. So um, back then they the called least. it a good bit. Yeah. Huh? To say the least. Talking about the equipment and stuff was old school? Oh, man. Like we, I remember <laughs> Germany was cold as hell and it was snowing and raining and sleeting and everything else. And uh, Sergeant Lotz was like, uh, what y'all doing the cold weather gear? Y'all can't wear internet. Take this shit. <laughs> like, it's cold, okay. though. Yeah. He said, hey, all you can wear is a jacket line. Are you not going to have that stuff down range? Uh, <laughs> oh, man, it was a trip. Uh, the trainings were the trainings were intense. I, I can't remember how many times I left my weapon somewhere. And, oh, man, you talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I ran uh, six minute, half, uh, uh, six minute, two miles in like. You know, about four or five times throughout that that field rotation, because 
Ah, um, and it was, I'll tell you something, but I learned the 50 cal really well. I fell in love with the 50 cal down, uh, during training and stuff. And, um, that's what you were when you deployed, right? You were a 50 cal gunner, right? Yep. I was gunner for Sergeant Lopes. They tried making me a driver a few times, but that didn't, that didn't go too well. <laughs> Vice versa for me. I, I was a 50 cal gunner until I, uh, hit a tree and then I became driver, a driver. So <laughs> yeah, you guys are talking. I remember that. Uh, I remember that the, the whole incident. I remember a lot of it. I remember um, our, our first mission up. Uh, the the cop when the uh, first time we was talking about the ASV rolling over uh, Lopez. So I remember that Pation was in there. Um, then because uh, he was the only one that could fit in that damn gun tube. Um, so I remember that. I remember going up with the cop. I remember old Sebastian Younger and stuff you guys were talking about. Um, I remember Ian with uh, you know messing up with the the five ton and stuff and the lugs coming out and loads getting in our ass for that and from then on like the preventive maintenance was everybody's responsibility and double checking uh, and I started laughing actually when he talked about that because I remember uh, riding in the gun turret one time with Muma and uh, it was Muma was my driver and. Uh, uh, we look over one time. I'm like, "Hey, man, do y'all see the tire going?" And like, we see the tire like go past us and realize that's our tire. Oh shit! <laughs> our, tire, our tire came off the vehicle and uh, had actually went rolling past us somehow. Uh, so, yeah, that was not that was not a good experience. Uh, luckily, we were on like the harbor. I think we were headed to Asadabad or just left Asadabad or something like that. Um, so. Yeah, that was a lot of good times, man. Good memories. What else? Just, just tell me some stories that you remember, because I, I think I've said it a couple of times. I have real shit memory, but then once you guys start talking about things, it, then it clicks. So just, just tell me some of the fond memories that you have, or, or whatever you want to talk about as far as the deployment in Italy goes. Uh, let's see. I had uh oh yeah well, I know. Do you remember the monkey? Yep. Okay. So we had the monkey for a little while. We were very heartbroken that the monkey um, got put down. We, we, yeah, so Sergeant Lotes asked me if I'm the one that snitched him out. First of all, I told him I didn't even know that he was the one that had it. Mm -hmm. I thought Lopez acquired it, but mm -hmm. apparently Sergeant Lotes bought it. So do, do you know yeah, anything about I, who, do you know anything about who snitched him out? Because he was asking me, and I'm like, it wasn't me. I swear. I I do. Uh, Oh really? Yeah, we heard the story afterwards, um, and it was it was kind of a roundabout. Uh, I mean, we had a we had a monkey. Let's let's face it, that wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna <laughs> stay quiet long. Um, yeah. And uh, but yeah, Cator uh, Cortesi was the one that was um, was back with that. I think it was, and was it Cortesi or somebody else? Um, but he he didn't like go tell us something. But somehow um somebody came in or somebody else had caught word that that we'd had monkey so it wasn't anybody within the unit that did it it was kind of an outside um but somehow like, all right sergeant the... Lotes, if you're watching here's your answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it, it was it was like the one of the medics or something like that and it wasn't doc or anything um like like i said it wasn't nobody with the unit that that went out and told but gotcha. somehow somebody outside the unit caught word that we had a monkey and brought back a monkey and so uh they came in looking for it and then that's when you know they, they found a monkey so it's very heartbroken uh, yeah. i wanted to buy the monkey he beat me to the monkey but we got the um to the monkey and monkey had a very great life uh prior to them uh putting it down he, he got spoiled that whole night um so but that was, that was very heartbroken i still have the pictures for it uh in the video i have a lot of pictures and videos um that uh, won't be public anytime. <laughs> uh, uh, I've got some of those too. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, Doc, uh, that's that's another cat I, I remember I miss. Uh, Doc Fox. I still uh, his uh, video that he made him and um, the other medic about the one seventy third. Uh, that, that's that's a fun memory. He's always been up there. Uh, what else we talk? I remember. <laughs> Speaking about first sergeant, I remember the first time the first sergeant talked to me. We were in Blessing. We had just got there for our first mission. I was coated in moon dust, head to toe. I was in the bathrooms, and um, I didn't just finish like washing myself. I was brushing my teeth or something like that, and uh, or shaving or something. And first sergeant says something to me, and you know, again, private. I'm like, holy shit, the first sergeant saying something to me. Like, 
I like froze up, looked in the mirror, like answered the most monotonous answer I could, and was like, "Gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was, uh, it was, it was good, man. Like, to, to, you know, uh, and I heard so many stories too. I have that video that you guys talked about too, and him uh, letting off the law uh, and the dust and everything blowing up. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was good hearing him and Ian. Man, I wish I could have got to um, Lotus' video before this because it, it would have charred, charred a lot more. But, um, yeah, I mean, I still talk to Kamara. Um, I still talk to Perez. I see Perez down there three, four times a year at least. Uh, really? Spend a few holidays with him and his family, yeah. That's awesome. Um, who else do I? Uh, I said, yeah, Kamara I talk to all the time. I just I was uh, messaging Green because I remember that because I'm, I'm down in Florida right now. And so I remember he used to be down here. Um, Lopez, I tried catching up with a few times. Um, but he's out there in Vegas. Uh, him and um, Nava, and his name was Hawthorne, actually. Um, I never could link up with him. Um, and then uh, I think occasionally, like once in a blue moon, I talked to Lay and talked to you, obviously, um, a little good bit, and some others. Um, it's it's def it's been said a few times now. It, we definitely don't talk as much as we should. But when we do, it's just like we're back, back together in Italy or Afghanistan. It's like no times passed. So, yeah, and, and like I said, man, that was a it was a bittersweet memory. Uh, I mean, it's a bittersweet time. It, it is one of those that um, you know. Um, <coughs> I, I credit I credit me being here and where I'm at today, and, and a lot of things to you know, that, that leadership to, you know, Captain Thing and first Sergeant Witten, Sergeant Lotes, you know, uh, Sergeant Chapman, Sergeant Sturdy. Um, you know, those those were my, my hierarchy. Um, but, you know, um, uh, I always want to call him Donatello, and I know that's not it. Um, Sergeant Clark? That was, yeah, that was his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that, yeah, he's Thanks. just the... Especially with the rucksack on, he looked like a Ninja Turtle. I, I'm yeah. sorry, Sergeant Clark, but yeah. I, I apologize too. That is your nickname is stuck. Uh, I wonder if he knew that. Did he? Did he ever know that? I'm pretty sure he, he had to. Have. He okay, had to have. with the glasses and, and he yeah. probably would have smoked the shit out of us if he if we would called it to his face. You know what, Sergeant Clark? I don't know. He he was one of the uh, he was the one that actually told me to um, go to a transport company. I I I disliked him for it. Sergeant Clark. I disliked you for a very long time because of that. Um, but he told me to go to a transport company because he was like, this this isn't um, this isn't reflective of what an actual 88 mic is. What you guys do here and the mission and everything and, and your job, this isn't what an, uh, what an actual transport uh, transportation uh, does. This is nowhere near. And he wasn't, in no capacity did he um, fib on that at all. Uh, what we did with the 173rd was um was unique it, it was it was great it set a bar so high that um there was I, I mean there wasn't anything else that uh i could find in the army that said it and i mean and i'm not saying like you know the special forces and, and the delta and stuff or, you know that they couldn't compare in it it's just when it when it came to what we did what we had what we went through what we experienced uh who right. we were you know, it, it was it was a bar in that in that sense. Um, you know, the action, yeah. I mean, you could you could find the action as a combat medic or as a cav scout, um, as many other, you know, action oriented MOSs, right? Um, and I and I uh, when I went over to Transpo, um, it was something I I battled with for. I mean, it was like that in itself was like PTSD because it was just like. That transition from being this high octane, tempo, smooth running, efficient machine that, you know, Sergeant Loach just didn't didn't take shit. And you know, it, it didn't matter if you were the gunner, you knew the TCs, you knew the drivers, you knew the the trans uh, translators. Like you knew everything within that world. You were self sufficient. If, if one of our vehicles went down, everybody in that vehicle knew what was going on, how to do it. We were up and out so many times when we've had tires blow out on the, on the side of cop that, you know, the road is, is a goat trail, you know? Right. And it was like, but we we were able to get vehicles up and out where other people just wouldn't have been able to even fathom that, 
they wouldn't have been even been able to to understand that. Um, and you know that was because of, of, of the leadership we had. You know that was because of the the the, the standard that they decided to set um, and and go in there that we were able to do that. And that that was just something I never experienced again in in, in the military um, with all the other units and. Uh, that was one of the biggest factors that was for me getting out of the military um, because I, you know, I just, I tried so many different places to find that, that same kind of efficiency and I couldn't find it. I got in arguments with um, my platoon sergeant and first sergeant and them and commanders in my following units because I had my, my platoon sergeant in my next unit uh, was actually my um, AIT drill sergeant and he would step there and tell us, uh, Oh, you guys would never have to rock down to the motor pool because your vehicles would be pulled up to you and this and that. And I'm like, uh, no, we rocked fucking like a good quarter mile down to where the vehicles was. Like there was a lot of low. Like there, I don't know how many times we still have stuff where we were out with the people in the villages, like looking for uh, IEDs, you know, looking for comm stuff. Like we were pulling guard, you know, infantry jumped out to go clear a village. We took over their base and and kept their shit going, like. So this aspect that an 88 Mike just stays in the truck, like, no, that, that's the wrong answer, right? Like I was, my second deployment, uh, it was the same, same, same deployment too. Um, you know, we were on a convoy in Iraq and the IED went off and, and uh, hit one of the vehicles up there. And I kid you not, the, the TC, which is the sergeant of the vehicle, came on, on the phone and, uh, or on the, on the comms and, Told him, said, we see the guys on the top of the hill. And I told my gunner not to shoot because I don't want to get an Article 15, you know. And it was like that that was their the mentality for it. Um, I told I, I'm still in contact with uh, my, my TC and my, my driver. Um, and we would swap out and stuff. Excuse me, let me put this on silent. Um, we would swap out and stuff, but um, I'm still in contact with them. And I told them straight up, same thing that... Um, that Sergeant Lopes and them told me, you know, or told us is that, you know, if you guys get in trouble, we're there with you, right? Um, we're there with you all the way. So if we tell you to do something, that we're all going to be there in front of that court martial, right? Because the most important thing at the end of the day is coming home alive. Everybody come home alive. So if they throw something at you, you know, you got to throw something back because if you don't, that's your brother, sister that's coming down the line that's going to get that, right? Yep. And so when I heard stuff like that, I'm like, I told him, I said, look, man, let me tell you guys something. If IED blows up around us and you see two motherfuckers on the hilltop at 12 o'clock at night and they go running off, you don't put bullets in them. I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass. <laughs> We're going to have words because I don't care what this And I, I'll be in, I'll be right there with you in front of the judge. If they want to, if they want to court martial, they want to incarcerate you. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but what I'm telling you is that this is a motherfucker that is out in the middle of the night and it just so happens that a bomb blew up next to our vehicle and they're running off. Hey, I don't know if it's them or not, but it's awfully fucking convenient that it happens to be that situation. Yep. Right. And um, and I remember that because we had the same uh, the same when they tried to change the standard uh, operating procedures when we were down range for Afghanistan and they had the issue of like, well, if they run into a house don't shoot the house because there might be, you know, uh, people in there. And, you know, what were we told? Was, well, if there's people in there and the people don't run out, then you're, you're in cahoots. Like, you're, you're collaborating with them, right? Yeah. Um, and, that, and that was the tactic that they would use is that they would see that, okay, well, if we shoot at them and we run into this house, whether it's empty or not or whatever the case may be, they're not going to shoot at us. That gives us a defense for shooting at them. And so, I mean, they're, they're not... Uh, they're not stupid you know it, it's all about uh it's all about the the battles and stuff and so it, it was just it was different man um it was different even the trainings uh you know we went to graf and Hollinsfield. you know it wasn't even so much about oh we couldn't wear winter gear and stuff like that um i mean how many hours did we spend out there doing ready up drills you know how many times were we were just i mean that's all we did ready up ready up Ready up, ready left, ready right, ready up, right? I mean, it's all we did. And, but it was basic. It became such a fundamental for muscle memory that I don't know how many times I was down range and I'd be shooting and I would 
my, my 50 cal would jam up and I knew what was going on with that 50 cal because Sergeant Chapman had instilled it in me so much that when I had messed up the 50 cal so many times in Grafton Hornsville, I tell you, like I, I had messed this thing up. I got it jammed. I got parts stuck. I had to call, they had to call in, uh, old green, uh, mechanic green that, uh, not, not combo green. Um, God, who, who we have for the armor at that time. Yeah. Green, um, was for the armor. I think it was, um, but they had to call him in. Uh, no, not green. It was um, man. I think what? No, man was the cook. Anyway, they had to call the armor in to fix it sometimes because I would mess up the fifty cal so much. It literally got to a point. I went to Sergeant Lotes and I was like, Sergeant Lotes, I I can't. With all due respect, sir, I can't be the fifty cal gunner no more. Like <laughs> I, I can't. Like, yep. and um, he and uh, believe it or not, he t- he told me to. And it's it's a lesson I, I kept with me uh, till this day. But he was like, um, let me ask you something, Bubble. I said, hey, what's going on, sir? He said, uh, have you messed up the same way twice with that 50 cal? <coughs> and I was like, I had to think. I was like, no, nah, I haven't. Like, I've messed up a lot. Like, I fucked up a lot. I was like, but it's never been the same time, right? It's always been something different. And he was like, um, well, then you're learning, right? <laughs> like, you have to make mistakes to learn and uh i was like that and that resonated with me right because it was like yeah you know i i I can sit there and nobody's ever going to come in perfect to know know how to do everything you you learn better by actually making mistakes because you learn not only how to do it right but also not how to do it wrong right or 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 better way of doing it and stuff like that so um that that was actually um one of the reasons, I guess, uh, you know, I ended up being a gunner and even more so one of the reasons I ended up being his gunner. And um, that was something that uh, I took, you know, I, I, I have pride in throughout all my days because, you know, his his standards was just, was up there, man. Um, yeah. And I mean, the, the, to be able to, to trust me, you know, somebody from his caliber that had the experience that he had and stuff, and I'm pretty sure uh Pation and and um Layton and and um um God I forgot the other gunner. Because uh, Layton had the PL. Who was um who was uh Captain Thing's gunner? Uh Schmitty was his driver. Yeah, Schmitty was the driver. Who was his gunner? Uh he's up in Indianapolis. I got his name in my I mean I got his face in my head, but I just Green. Greenly. No. Greenly, Greenly, Greenly. Yeah. yeah, yeah Sorry, Greenly. My bad, brother. No, I, I, <laughs> I knew you. I knew where you were at, though. I knew yep, where you yep. were at. <laughs> so, um, but that—that's what we had talked about too, is because you know we're we'd messed up so much and we'd done so much, you know. We just didn't feel like, um, you know, we're we're all privates and these are all high ranking. Their experience in combat is crazy, and so it's like, how could you how could you trust me with your life in your hand? And but they did. You know, and that was that was a badge of honor um, that we we often talked about. And that was the main reason we we all stayed to to be gunners. You know, after that, when we went up to cop that first time and first time we talked about it, we you know, we got there late going up. We got sniper fire and that was the scariest fucking thing in my life. You know, and uh, for as my brother, you know, he our brother, um, you know, he couldn't do it. And um um, what's his name that uh, got the scar on his neck? Hodge. Hodge. Uh, you know, he, uh, when he got, you know, they, they had to swap out. Um, and, you know, that, and that was something that was great about our, our, our uh, company, too, is that they didn't, there wasn't this aspect that, oh, no, like, you're going to be this no matter what. Like, blah, blah. And he was like, no, if, if, if you can handle this, cool. If you can't, then cool. Like we're not gonna we're not gonna bash you because you don't feel like you know being a gunner is, is your cup of tea. Like that's that's respectable, right? Rather than put somebody up there that just it doesn't sit right with them, right? right. Uh, but anyway, so we, we you know we got the sniper fire going up and uh, that shit scared the fuck out of me because first time in country, first mission. Like I mean, uh, I had somebody else's fifty cal that was rusted as shit. Um, I couldn't see shit. You know, we're up here trying to figure out like where are they shooting from. Son Lowe's thought it was from above us. 
people thought they were from the left like there's trees there's ravines like we look down and you're dead like if the, if the vehicle rolled over everybody was dead there is no pull down there's no rollover drills like you're just up on the side of this mountain and uh and this was before they built the road up and stuff so you know half of the wheels is like on the side of the mountain <laughs> and the other half is on on what they consider road and uh then you got the jingle truck drivers which god man hats off to those cats because they can drive a damn truck <laughs> a two by four i bet man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and it was funny to see them. Uh, they're they're in the, during the winter. The roads are ice over them, and so in order for them to make a three point turn, they just let the vehicle drive into the wall. Then they're back. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So we're headed up, and uh, we finally managed to make it through through this area. We got the two kills on and stuff, but you know, we uh, I think we barely find finally found the snipers at the tail end. I think Muma saw one, and um, somebody else saw another one. Um, and so we had that contend with, it was already dark, um, and, and we had to, you know, turn back around and come down and we come down and I mean, they just start fucking lighting into us from across the mountain. And, uh, all I see is just lights, you know, I got MVGs on and I just, it's like fireworks coming. And, um, I remember at that particular time, like I was pissed off. Like, I mean, it, it all occurred to me in like one big fucking heat that, you know, I I don't know these people, man. I don't know them from left to right. Like you didn't know them left to right. They didn't know them left to right. But they were just out to, out to kill us for no reason, man. Um, and it it pissed me the fuck off. And then it pissed me off even more that the movies told me that if an RPG blows up, like it's supposed to blow up the whole area, right? <laughs> and that damn RPG hit the side of the mountain. I'm thinking, oh my god, we're gonna get blown off this mountain, like, <laughs> yeah, like, and it was like. <laughs> I was like, mother. So, <laughs> I don't. I don't know how how you thought about it, like when you you know being up there and seeing the fire and, and I know you. The first the first time it took forever for me. So the first yeah, time right. I was just so excited to finally fucking be involved. So. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's a trip. But um, yeah, we got down and uh, the jingle truck driver in front of us got knocked out. And I'm pretty sure they've already told you uh, this one. Lot had the. Uh, get out and grab the jingle truck driver and then uh, push the vehicle off, uh, you know, uh, off the thing. Uh, I remember going back and, um, what was it, Captain Thing or somebody, um, or maybe First Sergeant. Uh, I remember hearing about it from somebody at some point. They were watching it. Um, the Sergeant Major was watching it in the talk, I guess, over on, um, on the drone. And so all they saw was this, like, vehicle roll and then the huge explosion. They thought that was us. So, oh, yeah. Uh, they, they freaked out, but... Uh, I remember the Sergeant Lotz tells me, he says, uh, Mama, I'm gonna go grab him. Lay down on cover fire. Don't fucking shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not gonna shoot you, son. <laughs> so I said, they try to uh, shoot their 50 cal. And I had somebody else with the, the last unit's 50 cal. And they didn't keep up with shit and their, their stuff. So it was all rusted out and just jammed every two shots. Like, just horrible. So I just end up fucking standing on uh, on a thing with the two four nine and just. Um, but then yeah, we got down and man, I remember like uh, that that firefight, man. My adrenaline was just I was like you know, I bet. <laughs> rabbit foot and uh, and it was like the most beautiful thing too because you know laying out there uh, it was on the vehicle it was the most uncomfortable shit ever. Um, it was body armor and Kevlar, but. Uh, up in the sky, the skies out there were just gorgeous. I mean, stars yep. galore. <laughs> so I remember I had racked out hard, and as uh, a couple of years later, I found you know adrenaline dump and stuff. But yeah, you brought up you brought up the sergeant major. Sergeant yeah. Lotes was telling a story. I want to I want to hear you tell it now. You had ha you already been in contact and everything, but we didn't have our um, our patches yet, our combat patches. Yeah. And Sergeant Major asked you why you didn't have one. You remember this? You remember this instance? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't believe. I still, ha I still have that patch. That's awesome. Believe, believe it or not, I still have that fucking patch because uh, I was scared shitless. So remember, I told you when first Sergeant talked to me, I, I froze the fuck up, answered two words, and left out the bathroom real quick. <laughs> so when Sergeant Major comes talking, I'm in the middle of like doing some weapons or checking, you know, PM, uh, doing a PMCS up there in the turret. 
and uh, he comes up, and I'm I'm at parade. Like I put myself parade rest, but I have like I'm in a turret, and I'm trying to hear him. <laughs> but at the same time, I have like one foot on the gunner seat, so I'm like struggling. Like, <laughs> and it was it was uh, it was totally embarrassing as shit. But I was a you know I was a pride. But so yeah, he um, he came up and. Um, you know, he asked me about the patch and stuff, and he took the patch off his arm, and he he told me bring his bring my arm down and slapped it on my on my arm and fucking carried on, and I was like, holy shit! Uh, I don't. It's amazing. Know. Yeah, <laughs> I, it, I I still have. I mean, I have my. Um, I actually keep my my whole. When I tell you, the one seventy third was. Um, was the cream of the crop and, and, and that deployment was the cream of the crop. I um, I still have, my only dog tags were from that deployment. My combat patch was from that deployment. Both both patches, the unit patch, the combat patch, my name, um, you know, the army. The only thing I have army-wise is from, uh, from, from that, from, I mean, I have some coins and stuff, but, nah. Yeah. You have yeah. one of these too? I have a smaller one of that. This uh, one? Yeah, yeah, that's the one I have. But, but this one we got we got signed. So no, I got I've got it signed by a bunch of you guys. I'm pretty sure you signed this one too. I probably did. I don't have one. Still have that. <laughs> Never getting rid of it either. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, all right, so we, yeah, we talked about a good bit about the war stuff. Um, I got you know. I mean, there's there's a lot there's a lot of other stuff that happened. There was a lot of great times. I remember playing poker and stuff. Uh, but some of the other stuff I talked about, I don't want to, you know, want to get anybody in trouble. Uh, but I still have a lot of pictures. Uh, I still have a lot of <laughs> videos. Uh, oh, uh, Vega. Oh, man, Vega. Um, yeah. Uh, who else? Um, you remember playing Sing Star in the tent? The, 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 ga- the microphone yeah, game where we would karaoke basically is what it is but I've, I've got pictures of us all sitting around in a circle playing we, we were like on the road for fucking probably 15 hours we'd get back shower and shit and then either play call of duty on computer or we'd play shit like that <laughs> yeah yeah i remember guitar hero was big over there yeah uh, Layton and green had combined their little living area um benoit used to come through and do his whole little back stretch thing uh <laughs> I I remember uh, I was laughing because I remember at one point it was so damn hot that um, it was like 120 degrees or something outside and then the wind was blowing too so it was like a really I mean it was just it was it was so hot that I remember they were joking like nobody was outside like no Taliban no nobody nobody was going to the defect um, and none of us were leaving the tent at all unless you had like duty or something like that like that was the only reason I think the NCOs came by just to make sure like we were all still in the tent because it was just like it was just one of those really hot days and then I remember they came back the next day and they were really pissed off because underneath the tent was a whole bunch of piss bottles <laughs> it's just like well I'd say nobody was leaving the tent like, oh, man. um yeah, yeah, and then obviously Italy itself. Uh, I remember you and Ian were talking about your guys' uh, transportation service, mm-hmm. taxi service, um, and that was good. I still have the pictures. Uh, thankful for uh, uh, courtesy of Kamara for my good old birthday night that you came and picked me up, which I'm forever grateful for. And uh, your car cleaning, you don't remember that one? I briefly. Go ahead. Let me hear it. Uh, so I, I, I decided to try to take it upon myself. I think it was my like 22nd, 23rd birthday or something like that. Maybe 23rd. But I, I tried to go ahead and take a shot of tequila for every birthday. And uh, me and Kamara were at Blue, I think. No, not Blue. Um, yeah, Blue was the club, right? Not the not the strip club? No, Blue is the strip club. Okay, so it wasn't Blue. Uh, uh, I didn't do the strip club. Uh, what was the club that had like the dance floor slash ice rink, uh, but it was also like a restaurant? El, El Diablo? No, no, not El Diablo. Um, but it was it was one of those. But yeah, I ended up. Uh, I was out there with Kamara. I think we Ubered out, and then uh, Uber. I don't think Uber was around then. <laughs> taxi, whatever the you know, gotcha. Uh, whatever it was that was available then. Um, it was probably me. You, you probably had me take you. 
If no, I no, we, we didn't have you take us. Okay. Um, but you you came and pick pick me up. I still had the pictures for it, and then uh. So apparently, like at some point in time, like I ended up just blacking out, and uh, Leighton was there, and Leighton uh, uh, helped Kamara uh, get me because the the guards, like I was so drunk, I had like five guards, I and mean, I was laughing. You know, me and Kamara back then, like we were just heavy weight lifting and stuff like that. So, and I was drunk, and so, uh, <laughs> but I ended up, uh, I hadn't thrown up when I was there, but then whenever I got to your car, like I, I don't know if it was like right before we got back to the post or whatever the case be, but I threw up. Uh, I was all on uh, outside of your car, and I think some inside too, or something like that. And I remember coming out the next night, and Proud was sitting out there on the front steps because uh, her barracks room was next to me and Alan. Uh, Alan was my roommate, and uh, she was like, "You had a good night, huh?" And I was like, "I don't remember it." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, she told me Kamara had to carry me in, and then uh, so I went over there and saw Kamara, and he, he said, "Yeah, he had phoned you, or I don't know if he phoned you, or if like you just happened to be dropping somebody else, and um, and he saw you and uh, had had a scoop us up, but yeah, man, like you, you came through and, and picked us up and uh, came back, and I reached out to you, and I was like, man, I'm sorry, like I tried to pay you for the the dry cleaning <laughs> and this stuff, and you were like, man, don't don't worry about it, like yeah." You have to send me these pictures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will definitely do that. Um. Yeah. So, and then what I said. Um. I remember Campbell was talking up with Campbell for a little while. I didn't talk to. I don't know nobody in a while. I mean, I was wanting to head out there to first son's wedding, and then all the COVID stuff, um, and then the. Um, they had the um, the reunion. What was it? Two years ago. Um, I couldn't make Seems out. Seems like it's been reunion. longer than that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, Son Lowe's out there in South Carolina. Thompson I was actually talking to Thompson for a little while. Um, but I didn't talk to him. Lore Slim. He ain't slim no more. He no, he's wait. not. No, he can't wait. Well, he, he not, that, he that was his rap name though, Valor Slim. So I wonder if he still called himself that. <laughs> uh, I think it's Slimmy now. Slimmy? Yeah, I think it's Slimmy now. Uh, <laughs> I, last I knew he was still trying to rap. I don't know if he is or isn't anymore. Uh, and then, yeah, I think the only other one, I mean, I kept up with Adams for a little bit, but um, she's with her wife. Uh, I ain't talked to her in ages. Not too much. Yeah. I'm pretty sure once we get done, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. To do. Yeah. <laughs> I think the one that I communicate most with actually is House. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah. I see House fucking all the time. Uh, actually, I went out and uh, spent a, a week with him over the summer. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. He had his uh, his neck surgery. Um, he a badass movie right now, man. Um we were actually we uh, he ended up coming out to Virginia with me for a little while uh, for the second duty station. So after we left uh, Italy, he ended up getting assigned to uh, Fort Lee with me uh, for a little bit. And so we ended up rooming up out there for a little while. Um, and then he got right before the second deployment, he got med boarded, um, and or he was in the process of doing a med board. But I keep up with House a good bit. Uh, him, Perez, and uh, Kamara are probably the the main ones I've. I talk to on a pretty decent basis. Yeah. yeah. Tell Kamara to hit me up. I'd like to see if he would be interested in doing this and, and get a cook's perspective of the deployment and everything. I don't know if he'd want to do it or not, but yeah, come I hit me up. Yeah, I was uh, talking to him about you earlier. Talking about me? Yeah, I was telling, I was telling him about the videos. Okay. Because I was trying to, I asked him about the, uh, the redhead that you guys were trying to figure out about, because um, he was a cook. He was out there. Uh, so I asked him if he if he knew him offhand, um, but he said you have to you have to see a picture of him. Um, somebody commented on my video. It's, his name's Hodgkiss. Oh, okay. See, I don't remember that name. Hodgkiss? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, that one doesn't ring a bell. Maybe if I see a picture of him, then I'll know who it is. But unfortunately, I, that name doesn't ring a bell to me. Uh, cause I only know four. Uh, man. I mean, aside from Kamara, so it was man. Hodgkins rings a bell, and it could be just because I'm thinking Hodg Hodgkins. Uh, that could be why it rings a bell for me. Um, 
and then the uh, the other little cat that used to be out there with him, because he uh, him and Man always hook us up uh, when we get the blessing or um, cop. Um, that's where I see uh, other boy up there. They'd always give us some some good extra food. <laughs> food is luxury, man. Yeah. <laughs> So you said you went to Lee after 173rd? Yeah. Is that, the, is that the only one you went to? or? No, I had Fort Lee. I deployed to Iraq for that one, Kuwait and Iraq. Um, and then uh, I went to Fort Polk. Um, oh, Fort Polk, Louisiana. Don't ever go to Fort Polk, Louisiana, kids. Never. <laughs> I don't know anything about Fort Polk. Well, I was there for training, but Fort, Fort Drum, that's the one I tell everybody to stay away from. So, <laughs> I've heard about that one, too. Uh, yeah, in fact, I, I think there are about two peas in the pod. Fort Drum is extremely cold and miserable, and Fort Polk is just miserable. <laughs> it's it's hard for us, though. We literally went to the best unit in the military right off the bat. I, I don't think that we should have just stayed there and never went anywhere else. <laughs> you know, and you're not lying, man. I, I kicked myself in the ass for that for quite a long time, honestly. Um I, I, uh, I, I, out of my military career, I think there was two things that I could say, like, I, I, you know, regret, um, and one is, is not re-enlisting to stay at Italy with a lot of the people, um, and I'm, and I'm teeter-totter for it because, you know, I think what made the unit so great wasn't Italy in the unit per se, but it was the people, people. that were there. The leadership and the, yeah. Yeah, it, mainly the leadership. Um, but I mean, all of us, I mean, we, yeah. you know, when people talk about war, Sebastian Younger made that comment. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to watch his TED Talks. <clears throat> and, uh, he, uh, I remember actually meeting that dude too, uh, up in Congo. We got, uh, they got mortar strikes in. And <laughs> that, so side tangent. Uh, we got up to, to Corongo at one point and they had artillery coming in. By this time, we'd already been in country for six, eight months or something like that. So we were just pretty used to, you know, getting fire and artillery. We knew that they couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with an artillery shell if they were sitting next to it. Um, but so anyway, we, a whole bunch of us, us and some of the entry cats, like we all hopped in the vehicle, right? I mean, that was a thing. Well, there's your artillery. Let's get on the weapons, get on the vehicles. Um, and I remember Sergeant Lotz comes running up with uh, LT. What the hell are y'all doing? Get the hell out of the vehicle. <laughs> Get in the bunker. <laughs> he was like, yo, I thought we were supposed to go in the vehicle. And uh, he was like, fuck, now it's artillery. So um, so we go, we, we're following the infantry cats to the nearest bunker and stuff. And then, um, so we get in there. And sure enough, like, there's, you know, Sebastian Younger. He's uh, got, got the other cat with him. I was shooting the shit. Uh, so that was my... Yeah, it was my first interaction with him because I think he rode in somebody else's vehicle or something. Uh, I don't think he rode with us. Um, but it was interesting. Um, so anyway, his TED Talk, I ended up watching his TED Talk and it, it really hit home. Uh, and he talks about Restrepo and the cats up in battle and um, and everything like that. Um, but at the one of the end of it, you know, his... Um, I guess he was throwing a party or something and, and one of the um, veterans he knows was there and uh, the guy was um, injured in battle, um, and he was, you know, his wife was asking, you know, if you could do it all over again tomorrow, you know, would you go back? And I was like, yeah, in a heartbeat. And I guess after the party, or whatever, she was talking to him, and she was like, you know, I don't get why he would say that. You know, he's lost so much, and he, you know, he's PTSD, and he's lost limbs, and you know, why, why would he say he goes back in a heartbeat? And um, you know, younger was processing that, um, but he was saying, you know. It's the camaraderie, it's the brother, it's the, it's the love, it's the trust. You know, without a doubt, you know that person to your left and right and front and back has your back, hands down. You know, the life is on the line. There, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. Yep. Um, you know, you come home and you can't trust your own family to that degree of level, right? Um, and it's not to say poorly on anybody's family or anything like that, but it, it is just that, that reality of it that... You know, we were there together, and I mean, we fought. There was a lot of fights that was breaking out. There were, you know, different uh, arguments. There was tensions that were throughout the um, throughout the deployment that you know you just you get with any growing family. But there was never a doubt 
that like they say when when we when we rallied up and we loaded up and we hit that wire there was no doubt in anybody's mind on that convoy we were tuned we were one machine if one went down we were on top of it we didn't leave anybody we weren't going to leave anybody you know um they made mention of, of uh, you know, the, the uh, sister company from the first 503rd and how they went on mission. And, and I'd heard about that because, like I said, I, I knew some folks that were from there that I went to AIT with and stuff. And I had been, uh, I'd seen throughout the deployment and, and uh, you know, they were on the same base as us. And so I kept up with a few of them. Um, and when the shit hit the fan with them, I mean, their leadership left them. They had people that leave them, you know, and it's just because they got ambushed or whatever, you know, they, they left, they broke that that chain like they they weren't that machine and that was something i remember thinking like we would never we would never have done like we <clears throat> we've been in that situation we've been in the situation we've been under fire and the vehicle got disabled or we were laying down covered with the uh with the uh the, the machine you guys are talking about the ied uh they go out there and detect them and blow them up and stuff and that had went down we did that recovery mission we came under fire with that, you know, and the medics were out there running and covering the land out fire. Like, that's just the type of unit we were that there was no doubt in anybody's mind that we were there together, you know, um, that if I had my view facing this way, looking for an enemy coming over, I didn't have to worry about what was going left and right behind because my brother left to my right, my sister left to my right, my brother left to my right. They, you guys had all that covered, yep. right? Like there wasn't even a question, a doubt, but you know, people talk about uh, females in the units and one of the things I heard throughout the later years was like, oh, can they be, you know, an infantry unit to combat arms? I'm like, man, you guys haven't met proud. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> are, you, are you kidding? Like, they, I mean, there was that discussion before and proud, you know, proud has laid down some people. And I was like, and, but that's not, you know, that's not an exception to it. It was just, it was just the aspect that, you know, that's the difference that our unit held that the other units don't because we didn't, that didn't matter, right? Like, I mean, I've heard a lot of like, this didn't matter, or this color, that color, that sex or that race or that gender or whatever, you know, all that matters on an individual basis. But when you hit that line, when shit hit the fan, none of that was there because it was, can you do the job? We can do the job. Like, it wasn't a matter of like, are you sure you're up to the job? Uh, we don't know if you can. No, no. We were so good trained. Like our leadership had us to a standard that was so high. We didn't worry about asking, could we do it? Because we already did it. Yep. Like that was the, that was the standard to it. And that was a standard. I just, I never saw uh, again, you know, it was, um, you know, you know uh, I don't know how many times uh, fucks. I, I didn't know shit about combo and Sergeant Lotz wanted us to do radios and stuff. And, I was like, sorry, we're not, you know, um, uh, we're not combo and stuff. Go fucking find somebody that's combo and go fucking learn until you become combo. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, okay, all right, that's, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so go find somebody that's combo. I was like, and they're like, well, that's that's level thirty. Like, you guys only to... no, you don't understand. My sergeant said to go find somebody that's combo. Go learn this. So that's what we're doing. We're learning yep. this. Like, let's, let's learn. You know. And uh, so, you know, we know we we knew level ten, level twenty. You know, we knew stuff up to the point where uh, people would cut us off because that that was a standard of leadership. Yep. Uh, that was that was our. So, you know, uh, and and that that wasn't there when everybody left. You know, the the next commander, Captain Rios, and them, and and I don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm not even saying anything bad or negative, and I don't want it to uh, to be perceived that way because I don't, I wasn't there with them, so I don't know how that chain of command was. I don't know how that second deployment was. I don't know how that unit was. Uh, some of the people, um, I only know what I heard. And, and what I heard was not reminiscent of what I hear in regards to how things were with us, right? And this is people that were in both of them. Um, it, yeah, it just, it, it just wasn't the same. I mean, maybe, you, I don't know if you've heard. Yeah. I I have, <laughs> but I like to think of the uh, the times that we had with our leadership. So, but I do have a question regarding that. Yeah, because uh, I got into it a little bit with Sergeant Lotes about this. Well, not got into. It. I, I talked to him. That's what I mean. Um, towards the end of our deployment, if you remember, Captain Thing got his major and became a major thing. 
<laughs> um, so we had a what's what's it called? Uh, transfer transfer of the hell's it called? Um, there's a terminology for it. I can't remember what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. When yeah. we, we got a new captain come in, mm-hmm. do you recall how you felt about that? Because I know me and a few other guys, we kind of were like, this is kind of fucking scary. We're, we got like a month left of this deployment, and now we're going to have a new fucking commander. It was just, it was just kind of, it, it was a punch to the gut, and I was kind of worried like what was going to happen. Turned out we ended up being all right, obviously, but do you remember feeling any certain way about it? Yeah, I mean, my thoughts for, or, or my memory of it was just that, um, I mean, it definitely happened, and a lot of people, you know, we were kind of like, well, what the, what the hell's going on, you know, now, what's, what's happening, this new person, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, I think what, what made me feel calmer, and I don't know, um, I can't place exactly where I heard it from, uh, or who I heard it from, um, but as, I'm, as, uh, as you're telling me about it, and, I, um, and I'm thinking about it, I remember hearing uh, this aspect of that it wasn't something that Captain Thing really wanted to do. Um, it was kind of up and beyond his control and just that aspect that, um, you know, him and First Iron had been on the road for so much and they had done so much for UNIT and you recognize like they really wanted him to get home. Like they wanted them to get home. Um, and so I think when I, you know, that aspect of it, um, really laid the groundwork because I'm not gonna lie like even myself by the end of that 15 months I I didn't think we were gonna get home uh, we had been under fire so much and we'd been in so many firefights and we had been under so many missions and we had done so much um, I think at some point in time like I I didn't I didn't think I was gonna I didn't think we were gonna I was didn't think I was gonna make it home and I remember hearing the same thing um, in regards to like first out of some of the chain of command and stuff and I don't know if that was their actual you know feelings or thoughts or anything um, and I definitely don't want to say that 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 was a consensus um, but I, I do know uh, between like me and Leighton and some of the gunners uh, Greenlee and stuff um, there was just that that um, fear that you know I, I think it, it kind of how many times can you roll the dice before you end up with snake eyes kind of thing you know so it kind of answer your question I, I guess you know as much as I, I felt uncertain about damn we have a new you know commander coming in and stuff it was also this aspect of he gets to go home to his family so I knew but right, I also yeah. knew too that that wasn't necessarily his choice like I, I felt like I knew enough of Captain Thing at that particular time to know that if it was up to him and First Sergeant and them they would they would never yeah, yeah, they would have been on every single mission with us until they had to get forced off and that that's yeah. that's that's also kind of what i heard too and so um it was a comfort i guess in knowing that you know if they didn't make him do it he wasn't right. going to do it so it wasn't that he chose to do it right right yeah. wasn't like he, so and I, I don't know you know that that was above my pay grade i was just yeah, yeah. but i mean I mean, what I, well, I guess what I was saying was like, I I understand it wasn't his choice and whatnot, but just the idea of having someone new in charge. For instance, I was his driver. I don't know if you knew that or not, but do you recall him zing out the radio <laughs> no. on a mission? Yeah. Oh, the new cat. Yeah. He the. We're not going to talk too much more about it. It was sorry, Lois brought it up also. Um, but one thing he said, uh, I'm trying to remember how he, how exactly he said it. We're going to support Captain Thing for, for everything for him. And we'll do everything we can to follow this new commander's leadership. But ultimately, we're still following Captain Thing's, like, you know, yeah, so. Yeah, and, and, I, and I can see Sergeant Lodes are doing that too. <laughs> uh, is that, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think maybe because that, that's probably why I was a little bit less impact it was because i mean obviously yeah if you're if sorry and i can see that like if sergeant lota got replaced with another platoon sergeant and he was my tc um and and i had to deal with that i would be i i probably would have felt the same way you, I, well there's no probably to it i, I would have felt the same <laughs> way you, like um because you know as much as as much as we learned from them 
there was still that avenue that the TC is supposed to have that experience. Like, you know, you are the truck commander because you you, you command the truck, right? Um, and so the TC's position was even more important than the gun or the driver because the TC needs to know everything in anybody's, you know, and needs to be able to, to move fluidly throughout all of that. If the gunner goes down, um, the TC needs to know how to operate and know the guns. If the driver goes down, the TC needs to be able to hop in and drive and know the vehicle, be able to fix it and get up or whatever, whatnot, and as well as work comms and stuff. And so if you have somebody that's in that position, they, I mean, they Z out of a, a radio, that's that's very disheartening. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but we all, we all made it. That's, that's what matters. So... <laughs> We did. We did. Um, I'm glad we did. And I think by the end of the 15th, like we were willing to go even more. And then I remember, um, I don't know, if, did you stay back for the last ones to head out or did you leave out early? Because there was an ad, ad Vaughn that left. And I wasn't among the first to leave, but I think I, I think there were still a few left when I left. So, there were still a few in country when I finally left. Were you there when we got the memo that Tenth Mountain, because Tenth Mountain had came in and they had already started fucking up, and it, they were talking about having us stay on for another rotation right yes. in there. <laughs> that was uh, that was after the the Advon everybody already left. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. That's why I asked if you were part of the Ad. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because I remember that. <laughs> how did that make you feel? I don't recall feeling any specific way <laughs> because, I mean, of course I was ready to to get home, but at the same time. I, for whatever weird reason, enjoyed being in Afghanistan and going out on missions. I, <laughs> yeah. When I went to Tenth Mountain afterwards, I, I think I talked about this with Ian. Maybe, yeah. I went to Tenth Mountain. In case you didn't know that. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that. Now, I, I was uh, part of the sergeant, the command sergeant major's PS, uh, PSD, personal security detachment. We deployed to Iraq. For ten months, do you know what we did for those ten months? Uh, what base were you at? I don't. I can't recall the name of the base. I have um, shit memory, but we were we were basically in the green zone. Okay. Right. But just just take a wild guess what you think we did for ten months. Uh, green zone, Iraq. You were at the pool. No, there was there wasn't that much of the green zone. <laughs> no, every Thursday. Okay. There was another fob that was that served defac pizza. Oh, nice. Our command sergeant major wanted that pizza every Thursday. So every Thursday, we drove two hours to this fob so that he can have pizza and back. That's what we did for fucking ten months. Damn. I, I missed. Was... I missed Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, I, I hit. Uh, Iraq was not. Uh, it was not my cup of tea either. We, there was a lot of parties that, that were going, like they had clubs, like no, no, no lie. We were initially housed in Kuwait, uh, down in, um, Everjohn. Yeah, Everjohn, I think it is. Um, but that's where the main unit was at. And, um, yeah, no lie. After 5 p.m., you could wear civilian clothes. They had a club on base, um. It was it was interesting to say the least. Um, Iraq, I actually so. Do you remember when we were going through training and stuff? Do you remember the the aspect in Afghanistan about saluting to an officer? Mm -hmm. What what was the what was the rule for that? Not to do it. Right. So <laughs> apparently in Iraq you salute. Uh, so I actually got chewed out when I was in Iraq um, because I walked past two officers and I didn't salute. And one of the officers turned around and was like, hey, Sard, are you forgetting something? And I was like, good morning. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And he was like, he didn't salute. And I was like, what? And I looked at my uh, my battle buddy. He kind of like looked like, what? And then like, he was like, yeah, you're supposed to fucking salute me. And I was like, okay. He was like, yeah, how about you fucking check yourself, Sard, and go about your bay? I was like, all right. But then and you could tell, like, the other officer dude was just, like, oh, and, like, just put his head down and stuff. But, um, yeah, I was, like, I it do me for a loop because, I, I, I mean, walking around, I was, the fuck? I, mean, I even asked my uh, squad leader when I got back. I was, like, are we supposed to salute here? Like, I hadn't even thought about asking him because I'm, like, we're in a combat. I mean, combat. Yeah. Like, and, yeah, so, interesting. 
Can you imagine what Captain Thing would have done to somebody if someone saluted him? <laughs> God. <laughs> I don't think the I don't think the hand would have made it to the head before. Probably Captain not. Hand would have hit him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's assuming first Iron or Sergeant Lowe's wasn't with them and did it. First. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh... That's wild. Yeah, that's Sergeant Sturdy. I, I talked to him a while back. He's over there by Proud. Um, I think. Or no, he's uh, he's over by First Art, isn't he? Yeah, I think First Art mentioned Sergeant Sturdy being close to him. Yeah. Like an hour away or 90 miles or something like that. Yeah, uh, Missouri. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I see him occasion Facebook, man. Uh, but yeah, I can shit tell me. I mean, it was... Uh, definitely miss it, man. I, it is... It's wild to say that, right? Do, do, do you ever say that to your wife or anybody, and then they're like, they look at you like you're stupid? <laughs> no, I think I think by now she's used to it, man. Because <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, like I said, me, me and Perez, we get together, we shit talk some of the stuff. Me and Kamara, we talk about you know some of the stuff. Um, uh, me and House, you know, we 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 catch up about good stuff and. So I think by now she's just used to the aspect of it, um, and uh, it, you know it's a pride. Um, I'm extremely proud of, of of that. Like it's 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 a bittersweet because it's it, it was a trip. Yeah, I know, right? I <laughs> I'm proud that. a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, it's the it, it was traumatizing as shit uh, because it's war. Um, but it was also traumatized in the sense that shit, man. I, I you know, I, I can I can't trust my own family, um, most of the motherfuckers. And you know, uh, if I even mention about like a bill due, Kamara's like, "How much money you need?" I'm like, "Bro, I don't, I don't need the money. I was just just telling you I got bills. Like everybody's got bills, like, you know." <laughs> uh, and then you know the same thing with anybody else. Like I, I just, I mean, for the most part. Um, Especially with the chain of command, you know, I feel like uh, I don't know. It's just it's just hard to put in words. But I think the best way, and, and I told them, I, I told I tell everybody, man, if, if Sergeant Lowe's was to call me up and say, "Hey, we're going to run a mission to hell. I need a gunner," I said, "Well, I'm already on the truck. What are you waiting on?" Yep. Like, um, you know, I started I, shaking my head because I already knew exactly where you were going with it. I completely agree. <laughs> If I'd be on a plane tomorrow. I'd, shit, I'd be on a plane right now. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really would. I, I'm pretty sure when I die, and my entry into heaven isn't a pearly gate. It's a it's a hum, uh, rubbed up Humvee with Mubon on the driver's seat and Sergeant Lodestone rocks at me, telling me to hurry the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> we got a convoy to do. <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's that's my pearly gates. Um, so. Yeah, you know, I I, I, love, I give thanks, man. Like it, it, you know, the aspect of me being where I'm am today, uh, who I am, why I didn't fall into the shit that I, I you know I should have fell into and everything, uh, was because of of uh, you know once and thirds because meeting all you guys is because uh, having that experience, uh, knowing what it's like to to have a real family, to have a have a goal, uh, have a standard in life. I think that was the, the biggest thing that, you know, that translated was that, you know, the standard in life of, of, of just knowing that I can achieve shit, that I'm better, um, that I'm meant for something. Oh, yeah. um, and, and all this stuff that they tell I And mean, it was hell. Like, I mean, um, I, I talk about it finally in, in respect and with remorse and I tear up fucking quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw my little graduation speech when I got my master's uh, degree, but, you know, I... I cried like a bitch. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. I'm actually in law school now. So that's a, okay. that's a, that's a trip. Yeah, yeah, my other school closed out. Believe it or not, I do, uh, I'm, I'm aiming to do veterans disability benefits. So, uh, little plug, you know, once I get licensed, I'll be in Arizona. Uh, but veteran disability benefits are, are appellate work, so they're federal. Um, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out. And, um, you know, my main goal is to help uh, our brothers and sisters, man. Yeah especially people like us that, that fight for a lot um, and really change those laws because, whoo, the VA is a whole nother spill. Uh, I don't think you have enough time in the world for that one. But, <laughs> um, 
but you know, there's so many of us that, that come through with that mentality because you know we didn't we didn't do a lot of the sick call stuff. We you know we we showed our ass. We had we had a higher uh, calls and and the way at least and you know correct me if I'm wrong or you have a different view of it. My my aspect going through you know 173rd was just that if 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 I take the weak way and not the weak way if I if I cop out um, if I if I take the shortcut or if I if I mitigate or, or uh, if I you know ditch my duties, then that leaves it on my brothers and sisters to pick up the rest of that work, and um, that was just something that they just didn't teach us to do. Like they, they you, yep. you, you carry your load and you carry uh, everybody else's load. Um, you know, uh, we carry each other, and so it was it was kind of all that. Right, Speedo, did you do you were you there with the dude that? Um, uh, part of that unit, he drunk that uh, the CLP was it the CLP or C CP or um, what what they call the lubrication oil for the fifty CLP. cal CLP yeah yeah the the cat that drunk the CLP uh, he was like the sniper he was an infantry cat and he was assigned to the unit replacing us and uh, he drunk the CLP claiming it was Gatorade were you yeah you were there for that no. uh, oh man yeah he uh, we were getting ready to go out in the left seat right seat. And uh, he was supposed to be the gunner for somebody or whatever. He was supposed to be this, like, high-speed little shit. Um, and we were down there cleaning weapons or whatever. And then we get ready to roll up soon. And somebody was like, yeah, he's over there sick. He's over in the medic's quarter. Uh, apparently drunk. Uh, took a big-ass gulp of uh, CLP. Claimed he thought it was Gatorade because it was in a Gatorade bottle. Yeah, that was that was the look that everybody else had, too, where it was like, okay. Yeah. CLP and Gatorade or so they breed them different over there in 10th Mountain. <laughs> I've heard we, we had we had the oh, uh, God I was part the, of that unit. Sorry. <laughs> no no we, we had the stepchildren of the 10th Mountain down in Fort Polk. <laughs> so uh, yeah I've I've heard I've heard a lot God. That's right here. That's all that matters right there. <laughs> It really is, man. It really is. Um, I said, man, I, I talk fucking hours about this thing. I mean, there's there's plenty of shit that, plenty of stories, experiences, and everything else that uh, that we had. And uh, I could listen to you talk and talk with you it's just all all night long. But I know you've got you got family and you got things you got to do. So, I mean, if you, you got anything you want to plug besides, like you said, Arizona, you're going to start doing the medical benefits at some point in time anything else like your photography i know you're a pretty good oh, yeah. photographer yeah yeah so uh i am i am a budding photographer uh so uh one of the aspects i was actually talking to my wife about this earlier i love to um i would love to get into the habit of, of being able to travel and take photos and stuff uh you know um do a lot of portraits candidates um you know i don't mind couples and family getting into a lot of it uh, as i build my repertoire uh i'm definitely uh, I like, you know, males, females, models, uh, boudoir, all that stuff. And I just, I like doing equal opportunity. Um, nothing big about it, but I think, you know, a lot of stuff for photography, a lot of people focus on uh, females and stuff. I think everybody is good and a lot of males have self-image. But, um, I mean, if we're doing that, uh, I would say, yeah, I mean, anybody, the 173rd or fucking whatnot, man, uh if you've been with us and you want some pictures done and you think, you know, I can do some uh, family or whatnot, give me a shout out. Or I can, let's arrange a, a time. Um, I'll be happy to fly out. If I can, you know, I'll, I mean, aside from the fact that the, of the peace and comfort to be able to catch up with my brothers and sisters, um, you know, it's just, it's just nice, man. So um, that's something I do. If you're around town, you want to stop by or whatever, uh, let me know. Uh, we'll set something up. I'll be in Arizona. Uh, I'm planning to move to Tucson at the end of the year, beginning of next year. Um, recently, we're doing that for some land, try to get some animals and stuff. Uh, have a pretty decent house. So, again, another thing, uh, once it gets settled up, I'll be sure to let everybody know. Um, and, you know, you guys are always welcome to come down. You want to come down and check out some shit, ride some horses, get away. Um, you know, me casa, su casa all the time. Um, you know, if you, you had that patch, then, you know, your family in my eyes. Um, so that, that's always there. 
and then same thing uh, once I get you know down there and get licensed um, you know you're a 173rd member man and I can uh, you know you're doing your uh, disability benefits and uh, you're in the appeals process because you know lawyers can't jump into after the appeals process but we can talk about all that um, reach out you know I will if, if it's something I can help you with or something we can figure out if I can't represent you but I can help you along the way whatever the case may be um, and you're 173rd yo let me know we will we will have it up um, and then obviously anything else man I mean honestly it doesn't even have to be photography it doesn't have to be law it doesn't have to be counseling I mean, if you want to call counseling uh, I'm not I'm not a licensed therapist but I, I do know uh, some license called uh, gin tonic uh, they will uh, help, uh, but no, nah, I'm not advocating such abuse. But I mean, call right. Uh, I think I think if I had to make a plug above anything else, uh, aside from you know, I miss literally miss uh, every one of you guys all the fucking time, man. Uh, it'd be uh, a, it's always a great thing to hear a word. It's always a great thing to see folks. It's always a great thing to know how you're doing, what's going on. Um, even if it's a simple, hey, you know, how's the fam, whatever, whatnot, man, um, a message, fucking photo, whatever, um, you know, my door is always open, man. It's never been, it's never been closed to, to, to any of you guys whatsoever, um, and it never will be closed to, to any of them. Uh, you end up in prison, let me know. I'll send you some letters, uh, put some food on your books, uh, some money on your books. Um, yeah, man, uh, it, it, it's... Shit, I always joke people, man. I got pastor blood. I mean, Southern Baptist pastor, man. So I go on for like two, three hours. I'm supposed to give like two minutes. Um, <laughs> but what can I say? I mean, this is a topic that I, I think it, it's 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 a family, man. Um, it's a 170 fucking third airborne unit, second 503rd fusion company, support the rock. We are a fucking family. And uh, as family as your brother... Uh, if there is anything that um, I can always help with, uh, I will. I will try my best. Uh, I will help in some capacity, if it's not the full capacity. Um, and if there's everything, anything you need, whether it's a listening ear, um, another head, you know, hand, a, a walk, talk, drink, whatever the fuck the case may be, let me know, man. Um, so, yeah, don't don't. I know some of you, you know, I ain't talked to in years. Don't let that ever be a fucking barrier. I don't care if we haven't talked in 10 years and the last thing we said was fuck off. That There's never been any any hate in my heart for anybody at the 173rd. And that's the honest to God truth, man. So uh, I, if I keep this up, I'm going to start fucking crying. So. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, I'll let you go. Thank you very much for doing this. Um Probably, probably gonna have to do it again though because like you said you've got more stories to tell and i, I want to hear them so yeah i, I got you to, uh, send you those pictures um, yes please do that yeah. and tell and tell kamar to hit me up yeah i'll do that too all right bro all right brother sky soldier sky soldier wait oh this one ah. <laughs> <laughs> later brother later. i had to stop before it got too emotional <laughs> no nah, i'm just playing i love you bobo that was a really good time um I just I love doing these. That's that's another one in the books for the Solid Steel and Sex Appeal podcast. And if you don't know already, we were a group of bad motherfuckers. That's all there is to it. All of 173rd, specifically the second of the 503rd, able, battle, chosen, destined, echo, fusion, all of us. We were bad motherfuckers. And I just I'm loving being able to talk to these guys. Some of them we haven't talked five, ten years even, but it's like we haven't missed a beat and and we won't either because that 15 months that we deployed in Afghanistan, the two, three years that we were all together in Italy and whatnot, we just grew. We're, we're family. These are my brothers and my sisters. I haven't had any of my sisters on. I'm definitely going to have to, I'm, I'm going to have to reach out to proud, maybe one or two of the mechanics. We had, we had some females in fusion and I'm going to have to have to reach out to them too. Cause they some badass motherfuckers too. <laughs> like I said, I, I, I love doing this. I love seeing these guys doing great. Like Bo's got so many things going on in life, but he's just an amazing human being and, and he's getting, getting even better. He's going to start doing fucking disability stuff for veterans. What? I mean, geez, <laughs> I, 
I love doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to be pumping out some more of these because I'm just having a really good time just, just listening to these guys tell these stories. So I hope you guys are enjoying as much as, as, as I am because um, there's going to be more coming for sure. Just got to reach out to these guys and hopefully they have time to do it. But everything in my, I'm going to do everything in my power to get as many of the soldiers from the 173rd on here. Um, so, yeah, as always, like this video, like all, all my other videos, watch them, hit that big old thumbs up like button for me, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Um, after you subscribe, there's a little bell notification. You can hit that and it will give you a notification as soon as I drop content. Cause as you know, I'm doing that content challenge for 2021 every day of 2021, 365 days of the year. I'm dropping content. It might be one of these. It might be one of my travel vlogs, might be a unboxing or a toy hunt. I do those crazy things too. Who knows? It's different content all the time. I'm going to have a lot more of these. I'll tell you that for sure. Uh, so hit that bell notification. So, you know, when I drop content and tell a friend, tell them, come check this out. I appreciate it. every one of you. Like I said, in the opening, have a good one. See you next time.